Kiss Fashion, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Miro Rose, with artwork for the opening and thumbnail image by Mariro on Pixiv. I will have their Pixiv linked in the description box below. This series never took itself seriously. It's just a silly little fluff piece that was released in four separate parts, and they've been combined together for the complete series in one video. Please enjoy Kiss Fashion. Part 1 Adrian Agrest A few weeks after Strike Back Shadow Moth's Final Attack Part 2 When Adrian saw the ladybug plush toy sitting on Marinette's desk, he knew. Marinette was Ladybug. While Marinette was never one to show up on time or have her homework done, she'd never missed weeks of classes at a time. No one in their class was able to get her to come back, and Alia pushed him to visit again and again, and he finally had time to come over. Despite having so many miraculous, Shadow Moth was strangely quiet, so it made this visit easier. It made sense. If Marinette was Ladybug, then of course she'd have shut down like this. It wasn't her fault she mistook Felix for Adrian, but ghosts can haunt until there's blood, scarring the possessed. She'd been here this whole time. It made sense, Rena Rouge asking Adrian to take various miraculouses, her absences throughout the day. She was Ladybug. She was Ladybug, and he figured it out by a gift she gave him. His matching Cat Noir plush toy sat in his backpack, like a lovey ready to comfort him. Ladybug made it for him, and confessed she had one for herself. Marinette lay on her chase, eyes dead as she turned to the Ladybug plush in her hands. He took off his bag, holding it in front of him as he stepped to her, floorboards squeaking underneath him. Hey, he said, sitting beside her feet. Adrian? Marinette looked at him, then twisted away as her face darkened. Yeah, he reminded her of what she thought was her biggest blunder. I have something to show you. Forget it. There's no way I'll catch up on homework now. It's not homework, he laughed, although he had some in his bag. It's from your cat. She sat up, hair frumpled from the cushion. I don't have a cat. Marinette, we both know I'm not talking about toe beans. Adrian tugged a zipper, reaching in for the cat noir plush. Cat, um... Cat Noir? That's right. Here. Before she could react, he pressed the cat plush to her face, a kiss shared between a doll and its owner's lover. Well, almost lover. Hopefully, they'd be lovers. Eventually. What? Her reaction came muffled through the felt and buttons. Adrian, what? It's a kiss, obviously. It's not like he could lean over and kiss her himself. Not if she didn't know he was her partner. Why would you... Why, why would you kiss me with, with... She looked down at the plush and gasped. Did she recognize it? Or was he incredibly off base here? Cat Noir? That's right. Adrian beamed, stomach doing somersaults. He'd dreamt of this moment forever, and although he'd never imagined it quite like this, he was so happy he could do anything, including wrestling Shadow Moth in a mud ring with fangirls squealing, if that's what it came down to. That's right. You and Cat Noir are, like, friends or something, right? He blinked. Come again? Because you're, like, 
his voice actor in movies and stuff. Of course he'd have you pass along a message. <sighs> that sly cat. He never stops flirting, you know? He's not the serious type. He's serious about you. <laughs> oh, me? <laughs> Marinette? She gave a half laugh, and it stabbed his heart. Just a month ago, she'd be in tears from the joke, not from her current reality. No, please. He's already turned me down. Not that I was, well, <laughs> actually interested in him. Excuse you? He didn't press, but it was still rude. Her father got akumatized over her feelings for him, after all. Wait, if Marinette liked Cat at one point, then Ladybug liked Cat? What? When? Was it when he was paying attention to Kagami? No. No, it had to be before that, but... Ah, oh, had he missed his shot? This was the worst time for a reveal! He couldn't tell her. Not when... <coughs> it. Not until he knew what he actually expected would happen if he told her. Besides, Ladybug didn't want them to know each other's identities. So... Well... Rat patootie. He couldn't tell her he knew who she was. So much for a confession with a kiss. Uh, kiss-fession, if you will. Ugh, Camembert. He'd have to break his own heart once again. Silly boy. So that means you're interested in someone else? Her face tightened, and she looked like she was going to cry. It doesn't matter anymore, she whispered, turning to the floor and clutching both plush toys to her chest. It's hopeless. Okay, who are you? Adrian nudged her shoulder with his. Come on, Marinette. Where's that charming spirit of yours that I fell for? She knit her eyebrows, lips parting as she processed what he said. He meant every word. Um, well, she swallowed, then shook her head. Never mind. I just, I'm in a funk. So let's unfunk it. There it was again, that nearly crying face. I appreciate it, Adrian. Really, I do, but you can't help me on this one. Why not? It was a light, yet heavy, question. Try me. Okay, uh... She looked to the ceiling. An evil supervillain robbed me after someone I wanted to trust betrayed me, and now the entire world may have to pay the consequence. Did he steal all your things? No. Can you beat him? Can I... What? No, that's way too dangerous. Hypothetically. Right, yeah. Hypothetically. Baronet sighed and flopped onto her back, and Adrian scooted over on the chase to give her what little room he could. We're talking about a clothing design, right? Huh? She lifted her neck like she was going to do a sit-up. Right, yeah, copyrights and designs. Totally. You can't bait the person who stole from you? That's... <sighs> she sighed, shaking her head and covering her face with the toys. That's a bad idea. What about the person who betrayed you? What about him? Can you bait him? Marinette went quiet, then sat up. Adrian. Yes? You're a genius. You're reading the gossip articles about me again, aren't you? I could kiss you. Oh? He started to grin like he had a mask on and leaned back, hoping she would come to him. But instead, 
Marinette sprang off the couch like a girl who remembered there was a homework assignment due at midnight. There was such an assignment, but Adrian doubted that's what she had her mind on right now. Anything I can do to help? Just keep on being a beautiful boy, she said. Waving her hand in the air, she kept her back to him, rummaging through a drawer. That's what I'm good at. He half sighed, half mumbled. She trusted him with a miraculous once, right? Surely he could tap into his brain, too. What was that? Nothing. Keep doing what you're doing. Adrian sighed and looked down at the chase, seeing the two handmade dolls of their masked selves toppled together. She'd, Ladybug, had shown up with them one day and said it was his birthday present because she didn't know when he was born, and she didn't want to find out because of identities and all that. Who knew it would identify her in a time of crisis? Okay. His lady had a bit of her spark left, and he knew who she was. He couldn't tell her he knew her identity, because then she'd need to get another partner, and that would be a whole mess he knew she was emotionally unavailable to handle right now. That, and if she was going to take down their nemesis, he was going to be there no matter what. When it was all said and done, he'd tell her. He'd kiss her, then tell her he's known her identity, and loves the whole whole package. Part 2 Adrian Agrest in the Dupang Chang's attic bedroom. Adrian stepped away to use the bathroom, and it was clear Marinette thought he'd left for good, because when he came back up, she was talking with her Kwame, Tiki, in front of a whiteboard that looked like something from a conspiracy YouTube channel. But, Marinette, we don't even know where he is! Tiki exclaimed. You're right, but you know what? We'll play by his rules. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? We'll use Adrian! Adrian? Tiki's tone inflected the way he raised his eyebrows. He got the miraculous by pretending to be Adrian, right? So we'll do the same thing to get him out of hiding. You mean... Yes! We'll get Adrian to pretend to be Felix and ruin his reputation. Marinette, how do you even know Adrian will be okay with that? What if he says no when you ask? I won't say no. Adrian chimed in, taking care to look as if he were lounging, yet interested, when he replied. The duo whipped around, eyes wide, like a matching set of plates and bowls before they both squeaked. Um, Marinette began, a ventriloquist squeak toy, mystery dinner planning, um. She tried to hide the board with her body, but he was pretty sure she knew it was too late. Tiki kept floating, her mouth in a flat line, and Adrian knew what she was thinking. All this time. Plague, the little gremlin, knew about this too, didn't he? Nice arch-nemesis takedown plan you've got going there. Mind if I chime in? Well, oh, this whole thing? <laughs> no, th th this is, um, it's... Ladybug's plan to take down Shadow Moth? Right! Yes, exactly! And it just so happens to be here, in your bedroom. She snapped her jaw shut, cheeks red. He hadn't meant to embarrass her, but how could he resist such an easy tease? That's... She ran both hands through her hair, which proved to be an oversight on her part because she still had dry erase marker in her hand, smearing it on her forehead and the tip of her ear. Hey, I've got another question. Hmm? He could hear her losing her mind. What if someone uses a bunch of miraculous at once? What? 
Like, why didn't you, Ladybug have the other users use a bundle at once? It'd be easier than finding a bunch of new teammates. Oh, because it can make you go crazy. Ah. Huh. He stared at her, and she stared at him. Oh! Also, that Felix idea isn't bad, but I have a suggestion. She'd spun back to her board, starting to scribble. Hmm? What if I became a Team Hawk Moth teammate? Huh? She spun, hitting the whiteboard with her elbow. Does dry erase wash out? You know, with Felix? Felix? Felix knows who Hawk Moth is, right? Right. Oh, right! <gasps> he knows who Hawk Moth is! Her face clouded. He knows who Hawk Moth is? Yes. He does? Uh, maybe. There's too much for this to be writing on a maybe! Marinette yelled, then slapped a hand across her mouth. Not that you aren't, like, smart. I mean, it's smart of you to even think of that. Wow, I mean, that's incredible. You're incredible. Yep, <laughs> no doubt. Ladybug. I was going to pretend to be Felix and go talk to our arch nemesis, but I can pretend to be friends with my cousin and go see him. I thought you two got along? Adrian sighed and ran a hand through his hair. I thought so too, but things are different now. Sure, he was good at giving people the benefit of the doubt, but Felix went out of his way to sabotage him too many times in the past year without remorse, and he hurt the girl he liked in the process. Not to mention giving their arch nemesis, who was confirmed evil at this point, power beyond imagination for- Wait. Why? Adrian? He looked back at the board. Why did Felix give Shadow Moth the Miraculouses? Huh? Why would he do that? What reason is there for him to want a terrorist to have them? I know he said he'd be relentless, but Hawk Moth hasn't done anything yet. What's going on? Huh. She crossed her arms and looked at him. It was like Ladybug looking at Cat. Strong, poised, regal, and in thought. For some reason, Marinette always shied away from eye contact without a mask. You've got a point. So what does Felix want? And what did Hawk Moth grant him? Adrian wasn't sure which question scared him more. They stared each other down, and Marinette's face grew pink. Must be the oncoming summer heat. So maybe that's why he hasn't released Chaos. He tried to use all the miraculous and went crazy, he said. One would hope. Silence trickled between them, and Adrian snuck a glance at Tiki. Was she really pretending to be a plush toy whilst floating in midair? So, what do you want me to do? Pretend to be Felix, or talk to Felix as Adrian? She bit her thumbnail. I don't know. I don't know if I know how to make good choices anymore. You're burnt out. Yeah. He couldn't see her face, but he knew both sides of her to guess what expression she wore. I can't trust myself to choose quality people. It stung a bit. After all, it was her trust in his face that got him into this mess in the first place. Well, no. It was Felix's fault. No doubt there. But he understood what she meant. What if I decide for you? Huh? He knew she wouldn't be able to take another loss. I'll be back. Adrian, wait! He went to grab his bag, picking up the Cat Noir plush and pushing it against her cheek as she chased him over. I'll be back. You don't have any Kwamis to protect you! <laughs> if only she knew. He wanted to tell her, but how could he? 
It would break her if his timing wasn't perfect. I'll be careful. Adrian moved the toy to her lips. I'll see you around, Marinette. And then he left, climbing up to her patio instead of leaving the way he came. Now he just had to decide if he wanted to keep his mask on when he went to confront his cousin. Part 3 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir. Hey, cowboy. Felix whipped around as Cat Noir landed below his window. Cat Noir. I've got a couple of questions for you, buddy. He grinned. So you've come. Which miraculous did you keep? Keep? Felix shrugged. I don't know what you're talking about. If it was one of the ones Ladybug had, you wouldn't have needed Hawkmoth. Cat began pacing as Felix kept his smile on. He'd known his cousin long enough to know it was an upturned grimace. Which means you wanted something he had. Which meant you wanted one of his miraculous. You're smarter than your partner gives you credit for. And, well, clearly he didn't give you the butterfly miraculous, so... Cat Noir turned to face this traitor of a family member. The peacock? What's it to you? Why aren't you using it? Why do you think your fairy tale is truth? All myths start somewhere. That's right. Cat had a better chance of Hawkmoth walking up to him in cuffs begging for forgiveness, then Felix letting something slip. Something's wrong with it? I didn't say that. You didn't say you didn't. The smile turned into a smirk. What's it to you? Because I don't think you're loyal to Hawkmoth. No. And if you aren't loyal to Hawkmoth, then if I help you with your actual goal... Then you can give me Hawkmoth's identity. That's a hard pass. Is it? You see, Felix began, waving his hand in the air. The only thing I could possibly want from you is your identity. Not my ring? Hmm, that too, but depending on who you ask, one is more valuable than the other. Okay, and that's... Okay. Sure. Sure what? I'll give you my identity if you give me Hawkmoth's identity. You cannot be this... Felix covered his face with his hand. No wonder you two are losing. Do you promise you'll tell me? Fine. I promise. He shook his head. Swear on your mother. Swear on my... Felix scoffed crossing his arms. Why should I? Because. Swear on Emily Graham de Vanily. His jaw dropped, but Cat knew what he was doing. He couldn't trust Felix's word alone, but his mother's name? <laughs> Even a thief has standards, and Cat knew his cousins. Fine. I swear on my mother, Emily Graham de Vanily, Hawkmoth is Gabriel Agrest. Cat stopped breathing. It clicked. That's how. That's his connection to Hawkmoth. Hawkmoth was Felix's uncle. Hawkmoth was Cat Noir's father. And I'm Adrian Agrest. Oh, come on. You think I'm joking, don't you? Claws in. Felix didn't say anything, and neither did Adrian. He should affirm that this wouldn't make it to Hawkmoth or something of the sort, but it didn't seem important. Nothing seems important when you find out your father, who you desperately tried to love, only to be disappointed time and time again, 
is a major terrorist and also your arch nemesis who hurt the girl who treats him better on her worst days than he ever did on his best. His father was Hawkmoth. Well, okay then. Adrian took that information and left, not bothering to spare a glance at Felix on his way out. Part 4 Adrian Acrest in his father's office. If you were a mega villain, where would you hide your priceless, powerful objects that could ruin the world? Adrian asked, looking through his father's built ins. With my teeth, Plague burped. The first six times Adrian asked the question, his little partner answered diligently. Somehow, repeating a question over and over can lose the sense of urgency. This was headed absolutely nowhere. And, as usual, Adrian had a terrible idea when it came to activities that led to absolutely nowhere. He transformed and took his masked face self up to his father's bedroom, tempted to kick it open, but instead knocking letting his father come to him as he readied a grin. When his father opened the door, everything Cat Noir planned to say buffered, leaving both of them staring with jaws open. Unfortunately, Gabriel composed himself first. Cat Noir. He gave him a once-over, then glanced at his ring. To what do I owe this visit? Cat knew his father mentally went through his head for who worked security that day as he spoke, and laughed at the thought. I hear your secretary is sick. Thought I could help. I don't see how that's any of your concern. I hear it's from a miraculous fight. Gabriel towered over him. I'm afraid I'm not following. Listen, I don't know who Ladybug gives Miraculouses out to. That much was true. But if she gave Natalie a Miraculous and it hurt her, then it's my job to clean it up. He was lying through his teeth, but a terrible idea stitched itself into the suggestion, and he was ready to rip it out. Gabriel studied him for a moment, then gestured to let him inside. Okay. That was easier than he thought it to be. How? He stood behind him, and Cat could feel the way his father stood with his hands behind his back. Somehow knowing he was a top-wanted terrorist made him less scary than being his father. Like this. Cat walked over to Natalie, took the still warm seat next to the bedside, and looked directly at his father as he hung his hand above her throat. Cataclysm! As Adrian, Cat saw what he thought was the entire catalog of faces Gabriel could make. He was wrong. Paris's hero. His face darkened. Give me your miraculous, Hawkmoth! For a moment... Cat didn't think Gabriel would admit it outright, but to his surprise, his father started laughing. That's it? Had he ever seen him lose composure like this? All I need to do is wait for five minutes, then take you out myself. Ladybug doesn't know I'm here. Oh? Do you really think I'd show up at our nemesis' home without coming prepared? What do you have planned, child? Cat swallowed as his ring beeped. In four minutes, if I don't have all of the Miraculouses in your possession, I'll cataclysm Natalie. You're bluffing. If you wait me out, I'll lose my ring to you. I'm not bluffing. If I'm going down, I'm taking her with me. Silence spun between them, crawling back and forth as their game of chicken webbed closer. Another beep, then another one. 
less than two minutes now, and Kat wasn't sure either of them blinked. At least Natalie was asleep for this. Silence sat in her cradle, its beady eyes shifting between them like a spider. The last beep came, and Kat's face twisted. He'd made his bed. Time to lie in it. Cat Noir turned to Natalie, heart sinking. I'm sorry about this, he whispered, then leaned forward, pressing his hand to her pillow. The bed disintegrated, and Cat scooped Natalie's body up, shielding her from Gabriel's view. He wouldn't be able to tell, would he? It'd be best to not stick around and wait. And what exactly is the plan? Plague wheezed, flying out of the transformation as Adrian set Natalie, still unconscious, into his bed. He only had less than a minute to get out of there, so he stowed himself in his bedroom before his father's shock wore off. Still working on that bit. This feels like a crack plot line. Maybe it is, a little bit. Adrian bit his thumbnail. Was it time to get Ladybug involved? He was in over his head, and there's no telling how his father was going to react once he composed himself. He was a supervillain with years of experience, after all. Eat your cheese. You don't have to tell me twice. <sighs> All he wanted to do was confess to Lady B Marinette and live happily ever after. Why did he have to take down a villain to do that? Taylor Swift didn't mention any of this in her song about how to get a girl. Then he felt it. The immense, quaking power of the miraculous, standing his hair on end. Plague! he yelled. He had to be ready. He had to. But then, just like that, the power exploded away. Had he imagined it? That murderous intent? That spine-chilling sensation? No. Not possible. And now, Adrian had another idea. Come with me, he said grabbing Plague and stuffing him into his shirt as the Kwame continued to gulp cheese. You're not going to transform? Shh. Adrian made his way to his father's bedroom, knocking on the door first. Father? When no response came, Adrian pushed through the threshold. Therein his father sat, empty eyes, with Kwamis he recognized floating around him. Should he go in as himself? Should he transform? Adrian strode in, knelt beside his father, and took the butterfly miraculous out from underneath his throat. This must be it. He hadn't seen it in person before, but this was as good a, a guess as any. Then he took as many miraculous as he could find, although they weren't all there, and pocketed them. Then, finally, he led his father to bed, tucked him in, and turned off the lights, praying the damage wasn't permanent. They'd known using multiple miraculouses at once was dangerous. This was the proof. Adrian might regret this for the rest of his life. Adrian might thank himself for this for the rest of his life. He turned and left the room, and then the building. For once, freedom didn't feel like he thought it would. Adrian strolled down the street, somehow lax in his emergency, then tootled through the Dupang Chang Bakery and up to visit Marinette after the standard bonjours. 
all of this felt surreal. Adrian? Marinette blinked as she walked in. Adrian! She moved to clear off her desk, stuffing things into drawers, completely unaware of what he'd just accomplished, and perhaps the consequence of said accomplishment, both positive and negative. I got you something. You got me something? Yeah, I'll tell you for a kiss. Uh, um, she looked at him, jaw open, and Adrian immediately felt ashamed for suggesting it. Uh, sorry, I, uh, here, I have something for you. For me? For me? She glanced at the mirror, most likely where Tiki was, then straightened her back and tried to smile. What? A, a, a kiss wouldn't be enough? Oh, to be teased. Marinette should throw away her sense of humor, while someone else will try to take her up on her offers. Here. Adrian reached into his pockets and pulled out a few of the miraculous jewelry. She looked at the jewelry, then dropped to the floor. What did you... Did, did, did you visit the, um... The, the 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 thrift store or something i figured out who hawkmoth was threatened his partner then took his miraculous when he tried to use a half dozen at once oh marinette swallowed totally and now we can live happily ever after am i on drugs right now Adrian cracked a smile, the first genuine one since finding out he shared blood with the city's nemesis. I'm your partner, Marinette. He held eye contact until she looked to the cookies on her desk, muttering about bourbon and baking times. Thankfully, the Kwamis flew out and swarmed Marinette with affection, proving the legitimacy of his actions as the situation clicked together. Adrian, watching his love get distracted through Kwame's and tears, transformed, taking a seat on her chase and waiting patiently for twenty minutes until she composed herself enough to notice. Cat Noir! What are you? She hadn't put it together, had she? I'm your partner, Marinette. Her eyebrows shot up, and she looked around the room. Did Adrian leave? Kat sat, holding his tongue as her expressions showed what she realized in real time. No. Marinette shook her head, voice soft. No, that's not... He picked up the Cat Noir plush and stood, walking to close the distance between them. You're my partner, Marinette. The Kwamis gasped as he leaned in, some of them fighting to cover another's eyes, only to sigh in unison when he pressed the plush to her lips. Mogmoth doesn't exist anymore. We can know who the other is now. Right? How long? She swallowed, looking into his eyes. How long have you known? Kat smiled, realizing she wasn't sure if he was Adrian or not. Since this morning. How did you... She looked at the Kwamis. How did you... I talked to my cousin and told him I'd give him my identity if he gave me hawk moths, and then we just kind of stared at each other once we learned super scheming runs in the family. And then you threatened hawk moth's partner? Oh, I straight up catnapped her after making him think I cataclysmed her. I'm definitely hallucinating. We're in the crackfic plotline, yeah. 
Huh? Kiss me, Marinette. Kiss me and I'll tell you everything. Somehow, asking for a kiss killed the moment, because Marinette stepped back as if composing herself. If this is real, she began. If this is real, then... Marinette looked at him, tears in her eyes, and Kat realized he'd missed a step. I know. He stepped forward, embracing her as she started to cry. He was so focused on salvaging this relationship after ruining the one he had with his father, he'd forgotten to recognize Marinette's needs. It took another twenty minutes for her to calm down, her body starting the detox of survival mode. He couldn't blame her. And to think, he was more concerned with his dating life than realizing what a behemoth of a cloud Hawkmoth having the most of the miraculous would be. Sure, he couldn't find the peacock miraculous, and that was concerning, but they'd figure it out together moving forward. You're right, she whispered. We can know who the other is now. You're not going to give me grief that there's still a miraculous out there? I'd guess Felix has it. Any ideas why he'd want it? Something to do with Santa monsters? I'm not sure. But you said he already knows your identity, so it doesn't matter if I... She paused, thinking through what she said. Wait. I'm Adrian Agrest. What? No. No, you're not. Marinette pushed herself out of Kat's arms. You're lying. My lady, do I ever lie to you? Yes, especially when you're trying to get kisses. So make me honest. Should he ask for a kiss? Claws in. It was a whirlwind of a day for both of them, with him single-handedly accomplishing what their team couldn't do for years, all because he found out her identity and wanted to confess in turn. So here, with the two of them standing in the other's arm, her face wet with tears and his holding a smile, Adrian Agrest leaned in, and kissed Marinette Dupang Chang. It feels good to win, doesn't it? If he were Cat, and she were Ladybug, she'd throw him a line about if he meant getting the miraculous or the kiss. But right now they were civilians, and he was pretty sure the news of her classmate being her superhero partner broke her. Marinette stood there, pink-faced and staring into space. <sighs> oh well. Today, he'd found out his lady's identity, fell into cahoots with his potentially evil cousin, emotionally destroyed his father-slash-nemesis, and kissed the girl he liked. Not bad for an afternoon. Maybe he should take homework assignments to his classmates more often. Still smiling, butterflies tickling his stomach, Adrian went in for another kiss, and this time, Marinette kissed him back. This was a good ending. The two of them, after years of pain and anxiety, found a happy ending, still together when it was all said and done. Thank you so much for listening. That was Kiss Fashion, the complete series. My cat is pawing at the door to be let in right now, so I'm going to end this here. Come here, you troublesome child. If you're still listening, comment problem child, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye. You can't keep, you can't keep interrupting me in the recording studio, buddy. You got a good purr, though.